We're being asked to find the volume of the solid that we get when we take this region here and we rotate it about the x-axis. And in this video, we're going to use the shell method. Okay, first let's make a preliminary sketch over here on the left. So y equals zero is simply this horizontal line here. y equals x looks something like this. So that's y equals x. And then this line here, if we like, we can solve this for y by subtracting x. So y is equal to 4 minus x. So if we plug in 4 here, we're going to get 0. So this is 4. And if we plug in 0 here, we're going to get 4. So this is 4. So it's going to look something like that. So it looks like our region is this triangle here. And this line here is y equals 4 minus x. Or if you prefer, x plus y equals 4. Let's go ahead and draw our picture again, but make it much, much bigger. So there's the y-axis, and there's the x-axis. And we have this triangle, looks like this. And we said that this is the line y equals x. So I'll make a really long arrow. That's y equals x. And this line over here is y equals 4 minus x. And we're supposed to spin this region about the x-axis, so I'm going to use a little funny arrow to indicate that. Since we're using the shell method, when we draw our rectangle, our rectangles have to be parallel to the axis. So when we draw our rectangle, it's going to look like that. Because we have a horizontal rectangle, we're going to have functions of y. So if we had instead vertical rectangles, we would have functions of x. But because we have a horizontal rectangle, we're going to have functions of y. All right, we need to find two things. We need to find h of y and p of y. So h of y is the length or the height of the longer part of the rectangle. And p of y is the distance from the skinny piece to the axis of revolution. Let's find h of y first. All right, since we have functions of y, we want to think about these guys as functions of y. So instead of y equals x, let's think of it as x equals y. So in particular, this distance here is x equals y. And this, we want to think of this guy as, well, let's see, we can solve this for x by adding x. So we get x plus y equals 4. So x is equal to... Let's see, we subtract y, so we get 4 minus y. So this here is x equals 4 minus y. Now we're ready to think about h of y. So h of y is equal to, let me switch colors. So h of y is equal to, well, it's this distance here. So to find this distance here, we're going to take, let's see if I can draw it correctly, we're going to take this distance here. So this distance here that I just drew that's x equals 4 minus y. So we're going to take 4 minus y, and we're going to subtract this distance here. So x equals y. Again, we're taking this distance here, which is 4 minus y, and we're subtracting this distance here, which is y. So we get 4 minus y minus y, which is 4 minus 2y. If that doesn't make sense, think about numbers. Like if it was 10 and 3, this is x equals 10, and this is x equals 3. Obviously, this distance is 7, but you can think of it this way. You can think of it as 10 minus 3, which is 7. Boom, there it is. Same thing here. It's 4 minus y minus y, which is 4 minus y minus y. P of y is simply y. This distance here is just y. So P of y is y. Now we're ready to write down the volume. So the volume is equal to 2 pi, and we're integrating with respect to y. So we're going from 0 to, uh-oh, looks like we have to figure out what this y value is. So in order to figure out what this y value is, we have to find out where they intersect. So what we can do is we can set x equals 4 minus y equal to x equals y. Let's do it over here. So 4 minus y is equal to y. If we add y to both sides, we end up with 4 equals 2y. 
and then dividing by 2, we get y equals 2. So this height here is 2. So we're going from 0 to 2. And the formula says that we take p and we multiply it by h. So p is just y, so y. And then h is 4 minus 2y, and then the dy. And if you put this in a calculator, you should get 16 pi divided by 3. So this was a harder example uh, to do. I hope this video made sense.